everybody, this is Sherry at djsundry.blogspot.com and I have been challenged to make a card using buttons and bling. And so I pulled out my buttons and I pulled out some bling and we're going to make a card. Now, there's a few things that I want to talk about. The first thing is my buttons. I have color coordinated all of my buttons into different jars. This is my metallic jar. It's mostly gold, but there is some silver in here. And I pulled that one, and I pulled this white one, and I pulled this purple one, but I found the button that I wanted to use. Let me set the paper aside. It's this pretty little shank button, um, and it is quite pretty. Um, but when I cut off the shank, it came apart. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is very carefully take some glossy accents. Let's see if I need to. Seems like I'm forever un unclogging glossy accents every time I try to use this button. I mean this this particular container. Of it. I've had it for quite a while. Um, but anyway, so we're gonna use some glossy accents just to put the button back together because I didn't want the shank to interfere with my creation. So I'm just going to um, put a little bit into the base just so it doesn't fall apart and then we'll use more when we go to attach it to the card. But for now I'm just going to set it aside. Now this is kind of a two-tone button. Let's see if I can pick it up. Kind of a silver middle with a gold tone outside. And then this is the shank that I pulled off of the button that we'll just throw away. So let's get onto the card. Now I chose some paper. Now I have a very special birthday coming up. Um, my sweet neighbor is turning 86. Actually by the time you see this video it may already have been past her birthday because I'm not sure when I'm going to post the video. But um, she is turning 86 and I found that out from her granddaughter. So I decided I was going to make a card for her. Um, and I have some flowers um, that I'm going to put a nice big bow on and we'll deliver it to her. So I wanted something really nice and kind of elegant. So I chose this SEI Couture Stack. I love this paper pad. The paper in it um, ranges from um, very simple, um, you know, very kind of almost vintage feeling um, in some of these. But some of these almost feel like they're foil overlaid. And so I chose one that was kind of a tone on tone foil overlay. And I'll show that to you in a minute. I'm going to just set that paper pack aside for now. I use some Versamark ink and I'll show you a little bit more about that in a minute. From close to my heart I have this stamp set and I don't know the name of it. The number is D1497. It came with either the Artiste cartridge or the Art Philosophy. I'm not sure but I wanted the happy birthday. So, and I've already done the stamping because I wanted to do some embossing. I'm going to be using this set in crystals from Prima. It's got a really pretty um, little bit of bling. It's my last little bit of this. And this is the paper. And I've cut this at four inches wide by five and a quarter inches tall because my um, card is going to be a standard A2 size card. And I just cut just a simple, um, four and a quarter, or it will be, four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. And whoops, I messed that up there already. I need to score this at the five and a half line. Forget what I'm doing here. Okay. What did I do? Somehow got off. How about if we just set that aside and start all over with a new piece? Um, so I scored, um, I cut this lengthwise on the paper. So I cut it at four and a quarter inches wide and then the five and a half is where I'm going to score it at the 11 inch side just like that. Now I may go back and um, do some things to it. I haven't decided yet but for now we're just going to start with our card base. Now so this is going to set here and this is going to go on top of here just like that. So let's go ahead and adhere that down to start with. I decided on this particular card because I have so much going on that I don't want to add ribbon. So I have some gorgeous three girl jam ribbon that would have been pretty but because of everything else that's going on on the card, I just thought it would be a little bit too much. 
and I'll explain why in a minute. So we're going to set that aside. Now I have this gorgeous stuff. These are ovals. You may have seen a video that I recently posted of a swap that I was involved in where we altered cigar style boxes and they were supposed to be filled with goodies and all of these were part of the goodies I found in my box when it came from my swap partner. This is a purple oval and um, a vellum oval and then these flowers were in there and I'm going to stack those together and what I've decided to do I think from looking at it this is probably the right side of the flower but for the bottom of the flower I'm going to turn it upside down because I want to have the alternating colors here and so we'll just take that I'm going to take just a little tiny bit of scotch quick dry and just adhere those doesn't take much in fact that was probably a little bit too much but that's okay and then this one we will put in the middle now I don't mind if there's a little bit of extra movement going on because I want the leaves to be or the petals to just feel very free and natural um, now this card is being hand delivered to my neighbor obviously and so I don't have to worry about how bulky I make it. So I can just kind of go wild. Normally I can't use a shank um, button on a card that I mail because it just will be a mess if I do. So let's come back over here to the card. And I decided rather than stack these right on top of each other that I wanted to offset. And you see here, this is where I use the happy birthday stamp. And I use Versamark ink and I heat embossed it with white embossing powder. And I'm just going to kind of offset things just a little bit. And then that bling that I have over on the side Notice I'm not gluing anything down until I decide exactly where everything's going to be placed because I want to have the freedom to move it. Um, and you kind of have to be careful when you are dealing with vellum because you can see any adhesive that will be underneath it. So um, I'm just going to have to decide here where do I want the bling to go? I, um, one thing I don't particularly like about the way this one is going is this last little piece that I have, I think the, the ribbon's going, or the lace on it is going to end up in kind of a funny area. But I think just peeking out from underneath will be just fine. Just like that, I think, is what we're going to do. So, to start with, let's put down our first circle. Just like so. I want to get plenty of adhesive because this is kind of going to be our anchor piece. And we're going to put this right. Obviously offset. Now, as I look here, I'm not going to have a lot of room to put adhesive or else it will show. But I know that I can put some here and I think I'll, I can get away with putting some there like that. And that may be all of the adhesive that I'm going to be able to put down. Um, we'll just have to kind of see. And again, we'll have that offsetting there. Just like that. Very nice. Okay, so now let's move on to our next step. Let's move on to our flowers. Now this is going, I want to kind of fluff those petals up, kind of cup it in my hand. And I'm going to use Scotch Quick Dry to put that down, but first we need to put our bling down. And so that can go right about there. And it will just be peeking out from underneath like so. Cup this in my hand. And then I am going to use, again, the Scotch Quick Dry with some glue. And I want to be careful, especially here, because I don't want it to seep out. Because even though it dries clear, it, vellum is not very forgiving when it comes to stuff like that. So and we'll just kind of fluff those up. So now we're going to put on our button. 
and the button is going to be the center of our flower. So I've got my I've got my um, glossy accents just because I think it will probably adhere a little bit better than if I had used a Scotch Quick Dry on it. It just I like what glossy accents seems to be a good choice when I'm doing metal. Now this isn't real metal. I discovered it is definitely plastic because I was able to cut it very easily with my um, just my normal Tim Holtz scissors. So now I'm looking at this card and I really like the way that is and I don't think I want to add much to it. I'm not going to adhere this down at all but I do think I'm going to round some corners. So I'm going to get my um, Let's go with the 3 8 inch corner rounder from We Are Memory Keepers. Put those down. And let's see, do I want to round the bottom? I think what I'm going to do oops, is round opposing corners, just like this. There we go. So we've got kind of opposite corners going around like that. So there we have our little card. Now if, to finish off the inside, um, I, I think I'm going to have to clean this because I didn't get a very clean cut. For some reason my older We Are Memory Keepers, Keepers Corner Chomper sometimes doesn't cut it cleanly. My newer one that's a, bit, a little bit larger I don't seem to have that problem with, but with this one I do. So maybe what I'll do is I'll go back with it and just re, that's what we'll do. We'll cut it on the half inch chomp and I get a much cleaner cut. Now that means that I've got a square or a squared off corner going into a rounded corner, but that's okay. It doesn't bother me. I just like the way that that looks. Just a simple, elegant happy birthday card. So to finish it off, let's go to the inside and let's get a piece. I've got a couple pieces of our paper here from that I used on the outside and let's see how I want to do this. Do I want to go up the side? You know, I think I'm just going to leave it blank just like that. Normally I don't do that for to the inside of my cards but I think today I'm just going to let this be and just let this make its own statement. So there we have a very simple card um, and, and it's very pretty and I think it's perfect for my neighbor's 80th birthday. So thanks so much for stopping by today. And remember, take some time to enjoy the little things. Have a great day. Bye. Okay, so I'm back and I have to say I felt like that card was a little unfinished. So I went into my stash and I found some paper that I've had for years. I don't know who it's by, but I found this purple paper that was a pretty close match to the oval that um, Siobhan cut for my little um, box. So I cut a piece out and I took the card apart and I cut this at four um, inches wide by five and a quarter inches tall and then I trimmed down my white piece and then added the layers. So now you'll see that I've got different layers going on there and that just really finished off the card. And I did the same for the inside. I did, I cut a piece of white that was three and three quarters by five and a piece of purple that was um, five and a quarter by four and I made the corners match like I did on the outside and then I took that little scrap of the SEI paper and I cut that to finish off the bottom another little piece of purple so there we have a much more finished card so thanks so much for stopping by today remember take some time to enjoy the little things have a great day bye